this tank is one of the best season rewards that I have come across in a long, long time. And it is on a game mode that I don't often play, as I'm sure you're well aware if you watch any length of my videos. Um, yes, it is Cold War game mode. But what is special about this tank is that it is completely different from what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a okay medium that has, of course, a little pea shooter on top of it. And the pea shooter is going to be one of the things that makes this tank absolutely unbelievable. And we're going to see two pretty decent replays. I mean, obviously there can be better ones, but I'm not a main Cold War player. So uh, yeah, I mean, it took a little bit of getting used to, but when you get used to this vehicle, it is absolutely unbelievable. And one of the ones that I found super, super fun to play, which can't be said for a lot of tanks in World of Tanks. And uh, the key thing about it is that it has both the good damage per minute of the standard uh, gun which is capable of dealing a hefty chunk of damage as well as being able to swap to that little minigun at the same time. But it can take a little bit of getting used to because of that fact uh, that of course when you do swap to that little pea shooter uh, you can sometimes end up actually reloading your main gun or switching ammo types and then the amount of times that I've been swapping to the little uh, kind of I think it's like a 30 millimeter cannon um, and then ended up being like oh uh, I've accidentally loaded HE in it and not able to pen absolutely anything because the gun on the tiny one is much smaller and therefore has a lot less penetration and when you're in a game mode that has tanks with armor of 400 millimeters and stuff like that yeah um, you, you just can't pen anything unless you get very lucky up against a light tank or something of that ilk but in this game what we've seen is that there is a BMP2 and you're about to witness the little minigun. <laughs> this is what I loved about it is because it's so fast at firing that when you come up against those light tanks uh, you can essentially just demolish them and yeah, I mean, that was a BMP2, which is a very good tank um, from what I've heard uh, online and from what I've seen of some of the other content creators like uh, Ricky Tiki Tave. Um, but what is uh, what is great is that not only can you use that little mini gun, but you can also use the, uh, you can swap to your main gun without actually having to like fire the fire button at the same time. So you can use the mini gun, swap to your normal gun and it will automatically fire. So this is really, really good. You don't then have to like double tap the, uh, the fire button, which is nice. Um, and it's actually kind of nice, especially when you don't really want to be having to uh, worry too much. Now, unfortunately, the BMP2 does fire a missile at us. Um, and so you're seeing here, we're going to track the Magash in a pretty compromising position and that allows us to get some assistance which is something I highly recommend that you use this little minigun for because you know if you're getting pumped by a tank like that uh, any reason or any way of getting extra assistance damage is going to be really really nice. Now we're seeing the Centurion 9 on the enemy team pushing down under the bridge. I'm kind of a little bit hesitant as to what I need to do since I'm only on 847 health. So not particularly the most health left. Uh, we miss out on actually hitting this guy. So I decide, look, my heavy tank's getting kind of <laughs> sausage sandwiched here and I don't like it when our teammates get sausage sandwiched. That's reserved for the enemy team and unfortunately for us, uh, we do not have many in the clip. So I should always note that you should be reloading the secondary if you can. It's much like a autoloader, you know, it keeps those shells. It doesn't like auto reload over time. So if you are coming up against people, you should always use that little bit. Uh, but you can see here, up against the side of the tanks, it doesn't always pen, so you have to be a little bit careful. Um, and of course, you do have to aim with a minigun. It isn't just an auto-aim and you'll pen everything. You definitely have to aim. But regardless, what we have uh, at this point in the game is we've picked up over 10,000 combined damage, which is a brilliant one. And considering that this is a premium tank, you'd be expecting to earn premium silver. But... We'll talk about that in a little bit as we go through, but you're seeing here the T-72, really good tank, um, and of course the Magash being a pain, we're going for that tracking shots on him, but now we are a one-shot, and so 
Yeah, once again, very, very hesitant as to what we should do now, and it's just a case of waiting uh, to see what the enemy team do from this point, since I just basically have to let my teammates take some hits, because um, I can't and I want to still be in the game. So the Magash up here having a, you know, a bit of a brawl with our FE4211, which is... Well, I mean, we all know about the FE4211 if you've played Cold War being a little bit overpowered. But at this point, now it's time to go back to the base. We haven't got long left to decap 30 seconds and we are quite a distance away from the cap. So it's just a case of getting up to top speed and the tank, segueing into it, has a very, very good top speed, allowing you to get a forward as fast as possible and, of course, uh, be able to mobilize yourself. It is a 30B after all and has a top speed of, I believe, 65 kilometers an hour. But remember, if you do... Uh, have some of the speed boost equipment which you could put in this tank you might want to um, but I'm running with advanced loader and we're also running it with um, uh, improved optics to get a little bit of assistance and um, I think we've got vents in it as well uh, just to improve as much now you're seeing me just trying to go for tracks here don't manage to do anything with that uh, but now it's just time to go in. I mean, we've pretty much won. There's no way they're going to cap from this point. And you're seeing me trying to hit this guy. Unfortunately, we are down to only heat rounds, which are standard rounds on this vehicle, which kind of suck because everything has spaced uh, armor. And you can see me firing HE at the back of that guy. Yeah, not the best idea when you have basically 30 penetration up against something that is... By no means weakly armoured. So there you go. 7,491 damage and three enemies taken. Now with 1,509 XP. Which is actually not that much for a game that you pick up over, what, 11,500 damage? Maybe even 12,000 damage nearly. Uh, so yeah, still didn't get a mastery badge. But I guess that's because we didn't take out enough tanks. Um, as opposed to the damage requirements. But yeah, really nice one. And we pick up 390,000 silver. So let's jump into the next one. So the next one that we have then is on Secret Line. And this is a more aggressive, very quick pace game where we still rack up a ton of damage. And this tank is actually really, really good for if you want to get super high amounts of damage in a short period of time. Because that tiny little minigun that you can fire in between your normal shells that have decent DPS in the first place uh, will enable you to increase your overall because you're not costing yourself anything it doesn't it's not like a case of if you fire the minigun you can't fire the normal gun it's just a case of they share a reload uh, or don't share a reload so they're completely separate so yeah you can basically just boost it up when you do get the chance to fire that minigun um, and it definitely is worth it because even if you only track an opponent at least it locks them in place and they can't do anything else from there so at this point, I'm a little bit hesitant. I don't want to push in too much. We have no idea if there's some little rats sat at the back uh, trying to be uh, a nuisance on their side like we're doing. Um, so I'm just sitting back a little bit uh, and taking advantage of the fact that we've got two YOLOing light tanks who we may be able to get a little bit of damage. Now, had having played a lot more in this tank, I would have actually been firing the small minigun because the shells are really, really fast. They do typically work a lot better at closer ranges. I wouldn't recommend sitting in a bush and firing off the minigun since you can see <laughs> that someone else on our team is doing exactly that. And it's not very subtle. I mean, I'm not surprised, but yeah, it, <laughs> you can definitely find out where someone is when they are firing with that main armament. But 1336 damage very early in the game, but it's at this point that the damage just goes from having basically not a lot to oh my word it's unbelievable and unfortunately for the m60a1 he's about to find out uh, the hard way that he's not going to have a great game and we're trying to fire at this uh, opposite number in the 30b2 who's going to feature just shortly um, as we yolo our way towards him but now you know we've got three assistance damage not particularly the greatest, but this game isn't about the assistance like the previous. It's actually about just going in and being a nuisance. And with 12 and a half minutes on the clock, you know, we've got plenty of time to deal the damage, but we're not after 12 and a half minutes. We're after two and a half minutes. So in the next two and a half minutes, the game is about to go crazy. Um, and you'll find that when you go in with this vehicle because of that 
um, little minigun, you can somehow get around a lot of tanks and that you can really scare them because obviously they don't realise how much damage per minute you can have. Um, and it's super, super fun. You can go in, you can plow rounds into them, you can be a nuisance, and they really can't do a whole lot to you. Um, the only problem is, is that if you do run out of those uh, APCR rounds, which are premium rounds, and to be honest with you, it's basically... Uh, in hindsight, having played the vehicle, I would have pretty much fired that only or exclusively because the heat rounds, they're slower, they don't manage to pen any spaced armour, not particularly great in that regard. Um, and of course, you can see here the a enemy AMX is coming in and we set him on fire. <laughs> uh, that's a feels bad and that is exactly what the little minigun does. It sets people on fire because of course you're firing out loads of rounds, there's a lot of module damage going on during that period and of course you can fire at the same time like we talked about in the first replay. So in my eyes, because this tank is 6,000 gold or at least you have to pay 6,000 gold, 4,000 more than if you're using the uh, if you're using the normal season pass, so it's, it's literally only costing you 4,000 gold. You get 25 level skips ahead. So actually, I think that this is probably one of the most worth vehicles that you can purchase at the moment within World of Tanks. I think it is super, super good, super cheap. You can upgrade your season pass if you've already bought the standard one and you weren't sure about this tank. Um, and it's very rare that I say that you should go out and buy a premium tank. Um, but for 4,000 gold, super cheap, you'll probably have earned that during the season anyway, so it's not like you're going to be losing any money uh, by purchasing this or not be able to purchase the next season pass, uh, in my opinion. So, yeah, I really do think that this is worth it, and I think that you guys um, will definitely not regret it if you do it. And you can see here, very, very quick to pick up the last remaining bit of damage. We're up to 7,500 in just under five minutes so yeah i mean the tank speaks for itself it's really fun it gives you a little bit of an edge it's kind of novel with that little uh a pea shooter and yeah i mean overall really happy with how this tank is and it actually makes me want to play cold war which can't be said for very many vehicles other than maybe the leopard 1a1 but hopefully that's given you a quick concise little video on the AMX 30 B2 which yeah once again highly recommend you actually do jump in and play the vehicle and of course a brilliant silver earner as well picking up just over 300,000 silver not quite getting that mastery badge yet but a 95% so yeah thank you guys for watching hope you did enjoy hope you join me back in the next video and I'll see you in the next one goodbye